doesn't stay. It doesn't do that. Okay. Gotta do my journal. Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Crystal, I'm laughing at your tired, cross-eyed Californian. Congratulations on being up so early. Although I have to say, with my um, new sleep, that I, I'm sleeping beautifully. I don't know why. But um, I woke up at 5 this morning and actually felt pretty good like I could have gotten up and faced the day I didn't <laughs> but I was feeling pretty good so um our our morning group is getting bigger this is so cool please say again the name of the Chinese herb mentioned yesterday C Miao San and I did go back and post it under quite a few comments so it's it is listed in there about four times um have the kids eaten yet? They're wide awake. Yep, the kids ate, and so Hugh was making fun of me because I was wiping Georgie's eye, you know, when you were a little kid, and your mom does that, eh, 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 you know, and paste down your hair, and, uh, but this morning, all children, except for Shayna, because she was hiding downstairs, but uh, all the rest of them, I got out of washcloth and washed everybody's faces, you know, I, it just makes me crazy. We come down here, and we turn on the camera, and I look over, and I just see eye boogers, and they're all just, like, crusty, and it makes me a little bit, you know, I am, like, the mom with the OCD about their faces being <laughs> clean, so this morning, we got out our washcloth, and, uh, um, <laughs> oh, Crystal, you're not sleeping well yet. Uh, okay, so the the keys are no alcohol in the evening, no TV right before bed, just read something, and um, make sure you uh, eat right and move a lot during the day. It does make it easier to sleep. Um, but, uh, uh, hey, eye snuggies. Yeah, <laughs> so oh, some of you are about to get slammed with snow again. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, some of you like snow, but man, there's been a lot of accidents and chain reactions. It's been bad news. My sister's going to get slammed. She's in Massachusetts. But hey, if you choose to live there, that means you like it. I don't know. <laughs> I choose not to live there. I'm very thankful today that I live in New Jersey and not Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm going to... So I, I haven't done my gratitude journal yet today, but I'm pretty sure being thankful that we don't have a bunch of snow down here is where I'm going today. <laughs> so... Uh, eat well, well, whole real foods. So can I just tell you yesterday I packed my lunch with my, you know, my chicken and my um, broccoli and cauliflower that I had baked the day before and I had a banana and I had, oh my gosh, I am loving apple slices dipped in almond butter. Oh, it is to die for. That's like having dessert. I had a little bit of uh, no fat cottage cheese with blueberries and almonds added. Like I ate like a queen all day and I just grazed all day and it was so nice to have that stuff already prepared in nice little portions on my desk so that you know in between clients I could just grab a nibble and go and then Hugh made a really good dinner of whitefish cod with just this phenomenal sauce I'll have to have him post the recipe we are gonna have to do a cookbook because this is fun um, and then he did baked Brussels sprouts and uh, yellow squash 
Oh, they were sauteed. Oh my gosh, it was all so good. Oh man, oh man. So, um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today was uh, veterinary exams because I talked to somebody on the phone for a phone consult yesterday, and I have seen her dog in the office, um, and she lives a couple hours away. So you know we're following up by phone and um, she had gone to see another veterinarian uh, you know for another opinion and she said the veterinarian never examined the dog or touched the dog the entire time she was there and I thought well that's a little weird because you know to really do a good exam you kind of have to get close to the animal now I will say when I first met Michelle from monkey's house and she brought in monkey it was before monkey's house existed and she brought in the true monkey the little dog when I walked in the room I went to touch him and she said he's not user friendly um and I didn't get to touch monkey very much during his um I don't know 17 months or whatever that he was coming to me as a patient I did a lot of my exam from across the room with him but um you know when I really needed to get near him Michelle would hold his head and I could manage to do it but um uh you know to do a good exam there really needs to be some hands-on now I will admit that as a holistic veterinarian while I am sitting there talking to the client I am gathering tons of information about your animal so you know whether it's a cat or a dog um, the cats we take them out of the carriers and we let them wander around and the dogs will usually take off leash and let them wander around and so I'm watching I'm watching how they're moving I'm watching to see what you know are they noticing things what how does the their vision seem to be are they listening do they seem to be hearing what's going on in the room um, if they're opening their mouth at all I'm getting glimpses of what their natural tongue color is while they're just kind of hanging out before I you know upset them by touching them I'm looking to see what their personality is are they nervous are they uh, very laid back are they <clears throat> following directions you know if the parents are saying you know sit or down or giving them hand signals you know are they you know trying to jump out the window to see what's going on outside so we do get a ton of our information just by watching the animal in the room and you know if I'm around I'll watch them walk up the hall to go into the room so that I can see how they're moving and if there's any gait issues uh, because a lot of times just watching them walk down the hall, I'll get some subtle information that maybe the owner isn't even aware yet, you know, where they might be bearing uh, less weight on one of the limbs when they're walking. And I'll watch how they're standing in the room to see if they're constantly shifting their weight. When they sit, can they sit square? Are they sitting off to one side? Do they have one leg extended? Are they rolling their butt end under, showing that they might have some uh, sciatic trouble? So there's a lot of information that we get without ever touching the dog. However, I strongly recommend that if you're taking, or the cat, I strongly recommend if you're taking your pet in for an exam, that the veterinarian actually put hands on the animal and do a full exam. So that includes looking at everything. So I usually start at the front of the dog and I actually, my notes in the chart, I start at the front and I have a specific way that I do it each time. And if I get confused and get off track in the middle, then sometimes my notes are a mess and I'm kind of like, ah, where did I leave off? Um, the older I get, the worse that gets, you know, that squirrel thing. But, um, uh, so I'm starting at the front end of the dog and so the first thing I do is I look at the nose so I'm looking at Abby's nose and it's got good color in it but it's got kind of um, some like alligator stippling so it's a little bit cracky and dry and I see this a lot in the dogs with cardiac issues Pookie's got it across the top of her nose uh, Charlie has it uh, across the top of his nose Shane is just starting to get it her heart disease is not as advanced so oh sorry my I kind of screw us up when I get away from the mic, but my mic really doesn't want to come down this way very far. So, um, here, Pookie, why don't you sit in my lap? Honey, we'll do it this way, and then it'll be a little bit closer to the mic. All right, so I'm starting at the front, and I'm looking at the nose, and so you can see Pookie's lost a lot of her nose color, and that's her heart disease. And so then I'm going to look at the eyes. She's got this little eye bump here, which is causing a little bit of redness. I'm going to look for cloudiness. I'm going to, a lot of times I'll shine a light in the eyes to see what their pupillary response is, make sure that they're responding appropriately. I'm going to look in the mouth with the teeth. Um, Pookie has one on this side, and I believe she has one on this side down below there. She only has her two teeth, but when I look in there, I'm looking at the gum color, I'm looking at the moisture, I'm going to feel it to see whether it's sticky or whether it's moist. 
looking at the tongue to see whether it's staying in the mouth, hanging out of the mouth, what the color is, if there are any um, masses, polyps, tumors, anything that I see in the mouth, what is the, you know, dental status, the, you know, do we need a dental, um, you know, do we have some broken teeth, so we'll get a lot of information about what's going on in there. Then I'm going to uh, look in the ears, and generally I will also smell the ears. And then if you're in for your annual exam, you want to make sure that the veterinarian actually takes out the otoscope. I don't have one here, or I would do it. Takes out the otoscope with the, the uh, cone on the end and actually looks down in the ear. Beca and you want to do this on both sides because very commonly when I lift the ear and look at it, it may look absolutely fine on the outside, but when I get that cone down in there, I see that there's an infection deep down in there or there's a big wad of debris or there's a foreign body down in there. And so sometimes people are complaining, oh, you know, the dog's shaking or the cat's shaking its head, but, you know, I keep looking and everything looks fine. And then when you look down in there, you find, no, it's not so fine. And you also should be looking to see if the eardrum is intact. And if there's a lot of debris in there, you're not going to get to the eardrum. So you want to look at both ears, feel them all over, feel everything, feel the lymph nodes under the jaw here. They're on either side. If you feel big lumps there, there's two salivary glands and there's lymph nodes. So you're going to feel small lumps, but all of a sudden, if you're feeling golf balls, those are not normal. There's lymph nodes in front of the shoulders, so I'll usually rub here. And when I do that, I'm also rubbing the neck to see if there's tension, muscle spasm in that area. Then generally I'll work my way down the back and um, what I'm doing, Puka, if we can turn you around a little bit. So as I work my way down the back, I'm feeling for any tension in there as well. Muscle spasms. Hey, you're pretty loosey-goosey little girl. Um, I'll look at their pads and I want to look and see, you know, are they soft? Are they, are they cracked? Are they dry? I'll feel them. Oh, you're tickling your feet. Look at the nails to see if they're overgrown. You could kind of use a nail trim. She says, oh, you're being mean, mommy. Then um, generally, because I work my way from front to back, at that point, I'll get out my stethoscope and I'll listen to the heart and the lungs. And I'm going to listen in multiple places on both sides because we want to listen to the lower valves and the upper valves in the heart. Sometimes I'll listen from the front, particularly on kitty cats, because a lot of times with cats, their murmur is going to be heard in the front or over the sternum, uh, which is the breastbone, whereas dogs, it tends to be further up on the sides. And then as I'm moving my way back, I'm going to stand them up and I'm going to palpate the abdomen uh, with hands on both sides and I like to generally when I do this I like to stand behind the dog and I kind of like to get down at the same level that they are with my hands going up like this and I'm pressing my fingers together and so generally I'm trying to find kidneys, spleen, liver, intestines, bladder um, and feel for any masses or lumps, any thickening of the intestines, any thickening of the bladder. It should be soft and easy to kind of smush around. Um, I want the um, liver to be tucked up under the rib cage, the spleen in a healthy dog. Really, we shouldn't be able to feel it. Sometimes if they're really excited, we'll be able to feel it a little bit, but it's a really tiny organ if they're not ill and they're not like overwhelmed. Um, so we're going to feel the belly and make sure that everything feels okay there. And then I'll start working my way down the back legs. And um, I, I'm not going to do this with her because I have her in a really bad position. But I will flex and extend all the joints. I'm going to feel the kneecaps to see if they're in place. And I'll extend the legs backward to see what the hip extension is to make sure that um, we don't have too much uh, tension or arthritis up in the hip area. And then there's lymph nodes behind their knees back here. I'll feel those on both sides. And then I, I call it looking under the skirt. You got some knotties in your skirt, madam. Um, I'll lift the tail and I'll take a peek under there to see if there's any masses around the anal area and see if it's a girl, what the vulvar area looks like. Um, you know, see if there's any discharge, if there's poop matted under there, if it looks like they're, um, you know, maybe having some diarrhea that's getting matted up under there that the owners are not aware of. Uh, see if there's any discharge, see if there's urine staining. There's a lot of information we can get about what's going on back there and take a little um, feel of the anal glands and make sure that they aren't over distended or, you know, hard or anything that feels abnormal there. So I can do that whole thing from nose to to tail 
literally in under five minutes and and do a really thorough job because I've been doing this for 34 years. Um, you know, new veterinarians, when they first start doing it, it might take them 25 minutes to get through all of that, and that's okay. I'd rather have them be thorough and do a really good job and look at everything. And it's kind of funny. Sometimes, you know, people will be talking to me while I'm doing this, particularly, you know, with the animals on the floor, and I'm just kind of, you know, and they don't really notice what I'm doing, and I'll get through the entire exam, and they're like, well, you never listened to his heart. It's like, yeah, I did. You were talking. <laughs> you know? um, so kind of pay attention. Uh, what I have tended to start to do is, you know, as I'm going through things, I tell people, okay, the ears look great. You know, the eyes are getting a little cloudy. You know, picking up a grade one murmur. We didn't have that six months ago, so we're going to come back and listen to that in a few months. Uh, you know, abdomen feels good. So I, 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 I kind of like to, you know, talk about everything as I'm finding it. Um, because that gives you an idea. There are some veterinary clinics that will give you a, a written report card, you know, where it has everything checked off with what they found. We don't do that at our clinic. That's just more paper that ends up in the trash can. Um, but, um, you know, getting information about all those things. And, you know, at the end of the exam, if everything is perfectly normal, you go, yay, you know, normal is good. Having, having a normal test result is a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, a negative test result is good. Um, so don't feel like you wasted your money. What you're doing is you're paying to find out that everything's good. And, you know, if I find lumps and bumps along the way, then I'm going to write them in the chart. Sometimes we draw little pictures and draw them on there. We usually will write a measurement for how big they are, um, which I don't whip out a ruler. I've been doing this long enough that I can estimate them. Um, but, you know, so that's in the chart. So when you come back in six months and we go through things again, I can say, oh, look, that lump actually got smaller. That lump got bigger. Um, I had a dog yesterday that we had put on um, a, a new um, dietary regimen and some herbs to try to dissolve some of his fatty tumors and masses. And uh, he lost 17 pounds, which was awesome. He's his ideal weight. And a lot of his fatty tumors shrunk quite a bit. And um, I was really happy with what we had accomplished in four months, four months. So, um, yeah, the vet gets kisses, which is awesome. <laughs> you know, I love it when I'm getting kisses. I'm not so happy when I've got teeth involved with those kisses. Um, but, uh, yeah, Puka, you're a good girl. So, you know, when you, when you go in for that exam, you know, you want to, and if, if you feel like your veterinarian didn't look at all those things, then just ask, hey, how did his teeth look? Hey, how did his eyes look? Hey, does yours look okay down in the canals? You know, oh, did you hear any murmurs? Hey, how did his belly feel? I know there's a veterinarian near us that does not even take cats out of the carrier. He doesn't like cats. So if you take your cat in for the annual exam and shots, he reaches in the carrier, pokes him with the shots, and that's all you get. And then that's what you pay for. And the cats never get an exam. And it's funny, uh, one of those clients came into us and we took the cat out of the carrier and we let it wandering around the room and it's sitting on the window seat. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'll put him back in the carrier. Oh my gosh. And we're like, why? She's like, oh, he's not allowed out of the carrier. I'm like, yeah, he is. I want him out. I want him to wander around. I want him to sit in the window seat. I want to see what he's doing. I want to get his personality. And she was flabbergasted because in eight years, her cat had never been taken out of the carrier at the veterinary office. So, um... You know, you want that. You want your your animal to get a full physical. Now, if you have an aggressive animal, please keep them leashed. Please warn the veterinary staff. It is not fair to take in an animal that you know will bite and not give fair warning. So please, 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 I beg you. Um, we're not mind readers. <laughs> Be nice to the staff. Uh, Ashley CBD would be great for her joints. We got all our kids on it. Also, the Deer Velvet supplement, the wellness formula, would be awesome. Really awesome. Okay, you got nuts. <laughs> 